Hello everyone, welcome back. So, uh, I'm not quite as sick as I was, but pardon me if I cough uh, or sniffle. I'll try and pause it if I do. It's been a while since we did an episode. What we're going to do in this episode is we're going to take that mech that I built in Blender, this guy here, and we're going to make him the main character. So there's a lot of options as to exactly how to do this, um, and most of you are probably going to go with a first-person main character and not, not this over-the-shoulder thing that I'm going to be doing. Uh, in that case, the lessons I'll be teaching you now will be applied to enemies. You're going to need to do the same stuff that I'm going to do for an enemy. Uh, so one of the keys here is that uh, we have an option as to the kind of system we want to build. Uh, and to show you what I mean, there's a rigid body. I guess you can't see it because it's going off to the left. There's a rigid body and there's a character controller. And you might be asking yourself, do we want to use a rigid body, or do we want to use a character controller? Um, and that's actually a really interesting question. A character controller has a lot of useful features, but it is something that you have to learn how to use. Whereas a rigid body, you basically just set velocities all the time and it works out. Um, so, it's up to you. Um, but the first thing we're going to need to do is create an empty game object, which we'll call player. And uh, we're going to put the mech inside of it. And that's because the mech object doesn't behave uh, in the same way as an actual game object does. It's got this animator here, and the animator does a whole bunch of screwy stuff. So if we put a rigid body onto this mech, for example, it wouldn't fall properly. Uh, it would have done something crazy. Uh, fall slowly, which isn't really that crazy, I suppose. But we can put a rigid body onto this, or a character controller, our choice. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and make it a rigid body. Now, the reason I'm making it a rigid body and not a character controller is because most of the things I'm going to be doing are about uh, moving through space in very peculiar manners. Or rather, you know, you have a, a lot more control over the exact way you move through space. Uh, and therefore, a character controller is a little bit too um, generic. So let's go ahead and add ourselves a rigid body, give it ourselves a little bit of mass. But we also need a collider. So let's just give ourselves a standard uh, capsule collider. In the long run, we'll be using a different kind of collider uh, for this particular mech, but that's OK. For now, it'll work. That looks right. So let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. He's falling quite fast, as you can see. There we go. Uh, he's actually falling straight down, and he stopped. See? There we go. And so that's basically what our mech is going to look like. He's about the right height already, so that's just fine. Everything works out, except for, of course, we're not actually controlling him. So let's go ahead and make it so that we can control him. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to take the, the camera from the first-person controller and put it onto the mech. Now, we could delete it and recreate it, but it's got a whole bunch of stuff on it that I like, like the mouse look script and the skybox and all that stuff. So we're going to go ahead and put just put that all over into our player. Dunk. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so the rest of this first-person controller stuff has a lot of uh, character motor stuff and input controller stuff. That's the stuff we're going to be replacing, so we don't need this anymore. We can just delete it. And I think that's all we need to do to get started. The player I.O. script is one we built, um, and that all that does is create new chunks, as you might remember. So you can see that we already... Uh, oop! We fell through. Um, I think the reason we fell through is because we were moving too damn fast. Let's go ahead and uh, see what happens if we change it to continuous. Oh. What's going on? Why are we falling through now? We didn't fall through last time, did we? Um. One of the oh, uh, we're not falling through. I'm just being an idiot. The camera was way, way, way below our feet. Mm. Brilliant, I know. 
Alright, so let's go ahead and put this camera right here for now, just so we can tell that we're inside the mech. And let's go ahead and fix this. We don't actually need that level of collisions. There we go. Ah, I actually can't tell where we are. Alright, so we're about halfway to the ground. No, most of the way to the ground. There we are. Wham! Oh, oof! And we fell over this time because we landed on an edge. That's fine. Um, we're actually going to not let the mech fall over. Uh, and the way we're going to fix that is we're going to take this rigid body and we're going to add some constraints. Uh, first off, we're going to go ahead and lower our Y value. We don't need to fall quite that far every time. But we don't allow it to rotate us at all in any direction. Easy enough. So now, when we hit the ground, which we will do very shortly, boom! You can see that we didn't fall over. Now we still have free reign over our mouse, but you can see that we only can look up and down. And that's because we stole the first person camera, um, the, the first person controller's version of the mouse look. The mouse look that is attached to the default doesn't actually let you look left and right. Um, uh, I, th I don't think. So uh, it it, it's only tracking for up and down. So we're going to go ahead and remove it. We don't need it. And instead we're going to go ahead and add it in as a default again. There we go. Um, we don't need that, that baggage. Unfortunately, I think if we... I'm a little bit worried that if we add it again, it's just going to have the same settings. No, okay, this time it's fixed. Good. Uh, and that should allow us to actually look left and right. There we go. Now we've got full control. Um, and that weird... The, the, the fact that I couldn't look left and right was just because it was inheriting from the first person controller, which actually contains two mouse look scripts. One on the camera for looking up and down, and one on the character for looking left and right. And that's so that your character doesn't tilt forward and backwards as you look up and down. But never mind that. That's, uh, that's just a d detail that doesn't matter. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a script that will allow us to move around. We're going to create a script called Mech Controller. Obviously, if you're creating uh, another kind of uh, NPC, then instead of having Mech Controller, you'd have like a Monster Controller or something. Um, and if you were doing an NPC, you'd probably have to put in some basic logic I'm not going to go over that for a long time. Uh, there are some really cool things that Unity can do these days with nav meshes, but I'm not sure that any of them are compatible with generative uh, topology. Don't know. That might be a little bit difficult for you. Uh, you can always just have them walk towards the player. That's what 99% of the Minecraft likes do. Alright, so here we are in the mech controller. And what we want to do is we want to detect whether or not we've been told to move. So. Unity comes prepackaged with all the uh, all of the axes we need, and it's best to stick with the axes rather than looking for individual button presses, just because that way you can remap them using an options menu, and it works very easily. So, for example, doing it like this will allow the player to remap it to whatever excuse me whatever keys or thumbsticks they particularly prefer. And we're just going to go ahead and take the rigid body and add to it. Uh, for the horizontal and vertical. Uh, rigid body dot velocity plus equals hors dot uh, hors times uh, uh, transform dot right divided by time dot uh, times times time dot delta time. And now we're doing this with a very blunt force method. Later on, we're actually going to do it in a different way. Uh, but we, we won't do that for a while. We want it to be real easy and simple at the moment. All right, so let's go ahead and see how that works. It's still too high off the ground. I should make this closer. Man, okay. And... Um, I can't actually tell if we're moving. Yeah, we are. We're moving. But you can see that we're moving in the most egregiously slow of manners. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that, but the big one is that we are adding an incredibly small amount to our velocity. So what we can do 
uh, is we can make it so that we multiply this by 10. Um, but even then, we're going to have a problem where we're going to just be grinding along. And a big part of that is the way that the capsule collider works, because we're on the ground and we're a rigid body, we're not, we're not a character controller. Um, oh, I guess it works okay. But the biggest issue for me here is the fact that we have a... Uh, we don't have any friction. So if we get to a straightaway and we move straight for a while, we'll just move faster and faster and faster and faster. Now, if you're doing this at home, you probably want to add friction in, uh, or you want to make it so that you have a maximum speed on your rigid body. Both of those are perfectly acceptable. Uh, for me, I'm actually not going to do that, because a big part of my game is seeing how high you can get your maximum velocity. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do in this episode is I'm going to move the camera to a position... something like this. Uh, there we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in a little bit of text into our script here to make the camera always go directly behind our character regardless of which direction it's pointing. Um, or rather, turning our it'll automatically turn our character to look in that direction as well. So the first thing we do is we say um, camera.main. Uh, transform.position equals um, transform.position plus vector3.up times 8, uh, 10, no, 8, 8 is good, uh, 6, <laughs> minus camera.main.transform.forward times 10. Okay? Now that will allow us to spin around our main character, as you can see. But it's certainly not ideal. You can see that it's really, really grumpy. It, uh, it vibrates like hell. And that's because our mouse look is uh, uh, a bit aggressive, and that's fine. All we need to do is turn this into a lerp, so... Oh, good no noise. Oop. That's not it. That's it. It got loud out here, so um, there might be some noise in the background. Like, a lot. We'll, we'll find out. Alright, you can see that the camera now moves uh, a little bit more smoothly, but not as smoothly as you might hope. So there's actually two more things we're going to do for this camera. The first is that we're actually going to detach it. And the other thing is we're going to turn in that direction. So uh, transform.rotation dot uh, it equals quaternion dot lerp and then here we do transform dot rotation and then we do the forward for the camera uh, except for we actually need to vector 3 ideal forward equals uh, camera dot main dot transform dot forward ideal forward dot z equals zero. Oh, sorry, y equals zero. And then ideal forward dot normalize. And then we just say ideal forward and then time dot delta time times three. If we don't detach the camera first, then uh, our camera will spin out of control as we try and turn to keep up with it, because every time we turn, it's also going to turn with us. Um, oh, uh, dir. Yeah, all right. So as you can see, we're now trying to turn to, to look in the direction that our camera is looking. 
Um, now this is not a, a very good free-floating camera. I've done something stupid at some point here and I'm not sure not sure precisely what it is and uh, it'll be a while before uh, it'll probably take me you know an episode of debugging to get the camera to work right and this this episode is already pl plenty long so this is where we're gonna stop in the next episode we're gonna try and fix the camera and we're also gonna animate the character running um, and both of those are gonna be fun I'm sure running probably more so than the camera <laughs> Ah. All right, see you then.